I don't know if I can really pick objects that symbolise me because I think it's all to do with um, exploring the edges of things. I, I hope that um, there's a there's a bit of history left about me, whether it's storytelling through my family um, or or pieces of my artwork or textiles are, are kept by someone and they're cherished. I mean, I don't know if, if we've got anything that would survive that long. Um, so there is, there is um, a piece of jewellery that my grandmother had, which has been passed down through the family. Um, so I suppose that's a family attachment for me. Yeah, to think about something that actually represents you as a person as well. I'd be thinking about things like, I don't know, books or paintings or something, you know, things that are important to me. Um, um, but yeah, for the, for the general times, I guess, um, yeah, mobile phones and laptops. Um, practical wise, even looking at culture, I'd say it would be plastics, it would be technology, maybe looking at um, and our use of medicine. I think for, for, for us to know our own place in the world and to have, have a connection with our time, we need to know about our own history. And we need to know as well the impact of our presence on the world and the land. And the only way we can understand that is by knowing the impact on the land and the world 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago. Um, and for us to have any meaning, because I'm not a, a spiritual person, um, so, so for me to have meaning of, of what we can do today, the difference we can make today, we need to understand our own hinterland and we can only do that with history and archaeology. Yeah. I think sometimes people are more, fa more, rather than actual treasure, people actually find more interesting little personal things that were part of a person's life and be, you know, that's mean more, I would have thought. I guess it's about connecting with like past communities in a way and people, um, you know, connecting with ancestors or, or knowing that, you know, people have lived in your area and how, that you know, learning about how they lived and what they did and it, it does make you kind of feel grounded. But I think it's about using objects to engage people, not just because they're shiny and lovely and and, and look like treasure, although some of them do. It's for me the, the the mark of success is using like a really boring bit of pottery and engaging someone in the lives of someone who lived seven hundred years ago through that boring bit of pottery. And it, and you'll find you can do it because people are fascinated in the past and in storytelling, and that's basically what we do. It's not just about the objects, but the objects themselves help to tell the story because on their own, what can you say? Whereas if you say, right, they were found with this woman and suddenly you get all these different ideas. You think, right, was she rich? Was she just a really lovely person? Was she young? Was she old? What, what is it about her? Uh, so it just, it gives that 
other level of perspective. At least I think if I ever become uh, a museum specimen, I hope people will look at my story. 